Welcome back to lesson three of week six. Check out the problem behind me. I have 16 divided by two equals eight. Uh, very similar to lesson one. What symbols do you see up there? What do we call that? It's a division sign, equal sign, and we have our numbers. So really similar to what we talked about before um, with multiplication. And speaking of multiplication, is this, is, this, uh, is this problem true? Is this equation true? The 16 divided by 2 equals 8. Is that true? Yeah, and how do we know that? Well, we know that because we can do the inverse and say 8 times... 2 equals 16. We know that's true. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. We know that that's true. So we can use the inverse operation of division, which is multiplication, to check to see if that division problem is true. Now, just like in lesson one, I'm going to replace one of these numbers with uh, the unknown box. Uh, in case you forgot, dividend, divisor, which is now missing, quotient. What value goes into the unknown number box? Two. Can any other number go in there? Any other real number, can it go into that um, unknown box? No, because then it wouldn't be true. Again, that equal sign is a balance. Both sides of the equal sign have to be the exact same. And in this case, they both need to equal out to eight. 16 divided by what number equals out to eight? Two. Any other number won't be eight. So we know that the only number that can go into that unknown number box is two. Let's go through some multiplication facts. I want you to give me the uh, thumbs up if it is true and thumbs down if it is false. So here are our problems. Um, do them as quickly as you can. So here we go. Six times three equals 18. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Real quick. Three, two, one. Thumbs up. Six times three does equal 18. Next one. Ten times five equals five. One, two, three. Thumbs down. No, ten times five doesn't equal five. One thing that I can do really quick is that whenever I'm multiplying, unless there's decimals or fractions involved, my answer, if it's a, if it's a real number times real number, um, is going to be bigger. My number is going to grow. That's what times is saying. It's going to grow. So if I'm multiplying two real numbers, this number or our product is going to be bigger. So what is 10 times 5? 50. Next problem, 7 times 4 equals 28. Real quick. Three, two, one, thumbs up. Seven times four does in fact equal 28. One times seven equals one. Three, two, a one, thumbs down. Any number times one is going to be that any number. So one times seven is going to equal seven. If you have one group of seven, how many total do you have? I have seven. Next problem, eight times zero equals eight. True or false? Three, two, one. That one is false. Do not mix up the rules of one and the rule of zero. The rule of zero states any number times zero is going to equal zero. So don't mix up these two rules. And the last one, three times four are our factors. 12 is our product. Is this true? Three, two, one. 
It is. It is true. 3 times 4 equals 12. The activity for today's lesson is something that you um, need to be able to do with someone else. It's, it's something that we can't do through uh, this video. Um, so if you have someone at home, an adult, a friend, um, you, could, you could do it through the phone, um, anything. Uh, what you want to do is you want to have these, uh, this sheet in front of you so you can either print it out or just be looking at the screen. Um, you want this in front of you, and it's going to be a, a, a mystery number game. So here's how you play, and I'm, I'm going to read straight from the book for this. So what you're going to do is one person is going to be the mystery number, and the other person is going to try to figure out uh, what the mystery number is. So let's say you get given, um, or you pick, so I'm looking through here, and let's say I pick three times four. Okay, I'm going to do three times four, and I'm going to make the number three the mystery number. So this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say to the other person, I'm not going to tell them any of that. I'm going to say to them, I'm going to say, I am the mystery number. I am how many rows of four you can make with 12 objects. What number am I? Let me repeat what I'm going to say. I am the mystery number. I am how many rows of four you can make with 12 objects? What number am I? Now the other person's job is to figure out what the mystery number is. So I heard how many rows of four. So I know four is my second factor. So I would be looking at this column here. How many rows of four equal 12? So which one of these facts equals 12? three times four, so then I would say, you are the number three. And then the other person would say, yeah or no, and, and so on. And then you can switch off and um, do as many as you want. You can also flip it around and you can make it a division problem too. You can say, um, you can say what, what, number, what number equals um, 12 divided by four? And they would know that the, answer or the total is 12 you're looking for a number that when you multiply by 4 equals 12 3. Uh, so there you go that's a game that you can play um, play anytime uh, if you're bored if you got some downtime uh, something to do to keep yourself practicing it get yourself uh, getting these facts memorized and even then putting putting them into uh, a little bit of a number sentence to get your brain really going there so you can play that as much as you want, but we are going to move ahead to the student book. We're on page 70, lesson three. Our key idea states, you can use arrays to represent division equations and to solve for an unknown number in the equation. So they give us the problem, 15 divided by unknown number equals three. So we have the dividend, we don't have the divisor, um, but we, also, we have the quotient. So think in array of 15 circles. So that means our total number, that first number, that dividend is gonna be the total number, okay? Remember, we're kind of backwards thinking now from multiplication and multiplication, that last number or that product was our total. Now in division, your total is going to be your first number. So an array of 15 circles in blank rows has three circles in each row. How many rows should there be? So what do we know? We know that there's three circles in a row. We don't know how many rows. They're giving us the answer here, but we don't know how many rows. It's our blank. How many rows should there be? But we also know that there's 15 total circles. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. How many rows? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Three circles in a row. Five rows. Total equals 15 circles. Multiplication fact that we could have made. Um, how many groups? Three. How many in a group? We now know five. Wait, wait, they have that mixed up. If I was writing this, I would have said we have five rows of three equals 15. 
but it doesn't matter if you have the factors switched. No, it does not. Three times five equals 15, five times three equals 15. The goal though was to find out what our unknown number was, it's five. Come down to the try this. Use the array to find the value of the unknown number in each equation. Just like back, I think it was lesson one, um, they already had the array drawn for us. So that part's easy. 32, that's our total. We know if I counted all these up, we'd have 32. Equals blank, or divided by blank equals four. So they're saying there's four in a row. They're saying four in a row. We don't know how many rows. And we know that the total is 32. So now I've just changed it into a multiplication problem. An array of 32 circles and blank rows has four circles in each row. How many row, I should say rows, come on, number worlds. How many rows of four circles? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight rows. Four. Eight times four equals 32. And that is our multiplication fact. Eight times four equals 32, which our blank was eight. In this problem, blank divided by five equals six. Remember what I said, that first number in the division problem, that, that dividend is our total. An array of blank circles, the total number of circles in five rows has six circles in each row. How many circles in five rows of six circles? So I'm gonna do the multiplication sentence first. Five rows times six in each one. So what is five times six? 30. So our blank or our unknown number was 30. And you could have counted them all up if you needed to, but it's five tables. Hopefully you got your five tables down. Next page is the practice, and this is what you'll be doing. Find the value of blank, use an array if necessary. 18 divided by three equals blank. This is something I would like you to do, is turn it into a multiplication problem. Okay, so we're gonna say 18 divided by three equals blank. So let's say blank times three equals 18. So what number times three equals 18? And hopefully you know that, and you know that's six. And so six will go in that blank and you're done with that problem. Do the same thing for all of them. Rewrite it as a multiplication sentence. Find your answer, find out what the unknown number equals. Remember that first number, if that's the blank, I know that that number is gonna be bigger than eight and bigger than two because that's our total. So that's where changing this into a multiplication sense really makes this easier. Take these two numbers, you're multiplying them together, to find out the total or that first unknown number. If that first number is the unknown number, the dividend is the unknown number, then you know that's our total. Multiply those two other numbers, get our answer. Do the rest on your own. When you are dividing, does the order matter? This is different than multiplication. Does the order matter whenever you're dividing? If I'm given these numbers, does it matter? Is 56 divided by eight the same as taking eight and breaking it into 56 pieces? Big time, it definitely matters. So when we're talking about dividing, does the order matter? Yes, it does because whenever you change the order of these numbers, we're talking about a whole new problem with a whole new answer. If I'm taking 56 objects and I'm breaking them into eight groups, there's gonna be still quite a bit in each group. But if I only have eight objects and I'm breaking it up into 56 pieces or 56 groups, I'm gonna end up with a really small number. I'm gonna end up with a fraction. So those aren't the same problem changes. When you're done with all those, you will do the practice page. It looks like this, same as what you did on the previous uh, student book page. Go through them all, double check them when you're finished, and uh, take your time. 
Uh, that's it when you're done. And tomorrow will be lesson four. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.